Here are the top 10 hottest jobs in IT right now. Number 10 might surprise you. Hot means more demand, higher salaries. And each job in my list, according to the 2023 Dice Tech Salary Survey, had the highest salary increase, which usually means more demand. Now, number one, which is also pretty surprising, is the help desk technician. What? Yes, like a lot of people, this was my first job in IT and a stepping stone to an extremely fulfilling career. Now, check this out. Help desk roles saw an increase of 6.9% with an average salary of 55,000 a year. That's a lot of money, especially since becoming a help desk technician doesn't require a ton of experience or skills. Like seriously, to be a good help desk technician, to land this job and be amazing, the best skill you can have is customer service. Soft skills. Can you talk to people? When a user calls in, you're the first person they talk to, you're the first impression. You set the tone and the pace for the entire IT department. It's a big job. Not many people say you can skip the help desk. I say don't, because it's here where you prove your technical prowess and your ability to talk to humans as well as computers. It's where you develop the soft skills that will set you apart and make you amazing later on in your career. Don't skip this. Now to get a job on the help desk, customer service skills again are the biggest thing. Second, I would say troubleshooting. Can you troubleshoot a problem, stick with it, Google it, and figure it out? And then third, a solid foundation of IT skills is definitely helpful. Now, a lot of this you can learn on the job, but as you're applying for jobs and trying to land that first role, it'll definitely help to get a few certifications under your belt. My favorite for this is the CompTIA A+. This was my first certification. It's what helped me land a help desk job and get to where I am now. I can vouch for it. And really, that's the only one I would focus on until you land that first job. Now, how do you get the CompTIA A+. Well, IT Pro by ACI Learning. They're my favorite IT training provider and the sponsor of this video. They have a fantastic A+ course that won't put you to sleep and practice exams to make sure you're ready. So check them out, link below, and use my code NETWORKCHUCK and you'll get 30% off forever. So definitely check it out. So was that surprising for you to know the help desk is growing in demand? Honestly, I'm glad to see it. To know that this pivotal role in IT is thriving and will continue to do so with an average salary that outpaces most industries. I love IT. Now here's an example job right here, a technical desktop support technician with the Dallas Independent School District. There's the salary range. And let me show you what they're looking for. I'm not sure why they have this at the bottom, but excellent customer service skills is a must. A plus certification preferred troubleshooting and a bunch of other things that you could Google, try out yourself and deploy in your own lab to get prepared for this. Don't wait to get in IT. Don't wait to finish that degree. Just do it now. Now, number two, you probably saw coming. If you're super organized and love to plan and also make tons of money, project management is the job for you. Any good IT team needs an IT project manager, someone responsible for the planning, the execution, and the completion of IT projects, making sure they come in on time and on budget. Now this sucker's seeing crazy growth, 15.6%, with an average salary of $120,000 a year. Now keep in mind, this is an average salary, meaning some roles require five to seven years of experience to get that kind of money. And other roles will require less experience and pay less money. So keep that in mind. You're not going to bust into project management and immediately start making $120,000 a year, but you'll get there. And this will ring true for most of the jobs I mentioned in this list. Now, project management is a tough job. And when thinking about IT project management, it means you have to have a bit of knowledge of IT as well as the organizational skills to do the job. Like I could not do this job. I hate this stuff. I don't like creating timelines and tracking deliverables and identifying requirements and keeping everyone happy. It's stressful. And you'll often be meeting with stakeholders, the people who care about the projects and higher ups and managers and telling them, hey, this is why the project isn't on time. Or maybe telling them it is on time and you're doing a great job. It's not for everyone, but if it is for you, do it. But how do you do it? Now to jump into the wonderful world of project management, I would recommend the Project Plus from CompTIA. Let me go find it real quick. Here it is. Project management, Project Plus. Looking at this thing, it'll give you a pretty solid foundation of project management and will help you land that first job. I mean, look at all this. And while you already may be a super organized person, you have to understand the lingo of project management. This will help you get there. I would say get your first job after that and then jump into something like the PMP. This sucker is the gold standard of certifications for project management. If you have this, you can pretty much go anywhere, but they do require proof that you have experience. How much do they require? Let me see, PMP requirements. If you don't have a degree, you gotta have 60 months of experience and 35 hours of training. Speaking of jobs, what does it look like? Let me show you a few. Here we have Project Manager 1. Here's some of the stuff that you'll be doing, everything I've mentioned already, and this particular job is pretty rigorous. They do want a bachelor's degree, very technical focused, and they want you to have a PMP. Here's one with a salary range of 70 to 100K, and they're actually wanting someone with IT experience. So this might be a role you'll jump into after already doing the help desk, or some kind of technical support role. It does help to understand the mentality of an IT person. Number three, it probably won't surprise you either. 
we have systems engineers. Yes, system admins and engineers are still very hot in a bunch of ways. With a salary increase of 7.5% and an average salary of $120,000 per year, this job's amazing. And it's perfect for those of you looking for the next step after help desk, especially if you fell in love with the server management aspect of IT or maybe cloud or Linux or whatever. Now I say all that because the term sysadmin or sysengineer, it encompasses a pretty wide variety of roles you might find. Rarely are two jobs the same. It might be a VMware engineer, a cloud engineer, a server engineer, a Linux engineer. Like there's a bunch of different engineers you can be or admins, but whatever the case, just know your job will be focusing on designing, building and maintaining the solutions for your company. Now being so varied, it's hard to recommend one cert to get this job because it depends. For example, if you wanna go cloud, you might go for the Microsoft Azure Administrator AZ-104 or the Google Cloud Platform Associate Cloud Engineer or the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate, always a mouthful. Or you might get some Linux, CompTIA Linux Plus, LPIC 1, LPIC 2, if you wanna become a Linux Administrator or just have those skills because they will come in handy, believe me, or go deeper down the Microsoft track. And then adding some Python skills and PowerShell skills, definitely a plus. Now, as far as jobs, here's a few examples. Here's one that focuses specifically on VMware and SCCM. And as a systems engineer or admin, not only will you be helping design and build solutions, but you'll also be supporting them. You'll probably be the last line of support from the help desk. They might have tier one, tier two, tier three, and they hand it off to you when it's an issue they can't solve. And for this particular role, here's what they're looking for. VMware vSphere experience. They want some networking knowledge, Microsoft and Linux OS knowledge. And a common thread you'll see across every area in IT is they're dying to, for you to have customer service skills, good problem solving skills, excellent interpersonal skills. Let me tell you something about really any job everywhere in the world. If you're fun to work with and you're humble and you work hard, you can surpass most of your peers. It's really easy to hire someone you like that's personable and extremely hard to fire that same person. And again, this particular job is looking for the VCP certification from VMware, CCNA from Cisco, Nutanix, NetApp, EMC, it's a varied role. And you don't have to know everything here to be able to apply for a role like this. This is a wish list. If you have two or three things, apply for it. They know you can learn it on the job. Number four, I bet you didn't see this one coming. Cybersecurity engineer. Of course you saw that coming, right? Cybersecurity has been and will continue to be one of the hottest careers in the world. Not just IT, but everywhere. With a salary increase of 7.7% and an average salary of, well, is that right? 145,000 a year, there are plenty of jobs and money to go around. Now, cybersecurity is all about IT security, protecting a company and its stuff. And you'll either be helping bolstering its defenses or testing them and seeing if you can bypass them and then tell them where they need to fill the holes and fix it. Now, the range of roles here is pretty wide. And you may find yourself picking between a dozen or so different specialties within cybersecurity. But just know this, cybersecurity, whatever path you choose, is an advanced career. You can't just go, huh, I wanna become a cybersecurity engineer without any experience or knowledge. You'll often combine the skills from all the roles we've mentioned so far. Help desk, system administration, knowing Linux and Windows and cloud. You'll take those skills with you into learning to become a cybersecurity engineer because you have to know how things work before you can protect them from getting hacked. So you'll often see people stepping into cybersecurity from those roles. It's an advanced step up. It's a specialty. Now to get started in cybersecurity, I do have a roadmap video that I made earlier this year. Check it out, link below or somewhere up here. But it's gonna involve a lot of prerequisite knowledge cutting your teeth on the beginning IT foundations, and then moving on to more advanced things. You might want to learn how to be a red teamer or someone who is really good at attacking IT systems for good. So you look at the EJPT certification or the CPTS certification from Hack the Box. And from there, you might wanna go more advanced, get your OSCP. And then on the blue team side of things, where you're more focused on securing the stuff, there are a ton of options. For example, every vendor, think Cisco, Microsoft, Azure, AWS, they have specific certifications that focus on securing their platforms and their devices. Going down those certification paths, CCMP security, the Azure Security Engineer Associate, those will definitely help you land a job in the blue team area or the IT security area of IT. As far as jobs go, here's an example. This one's actually pretty fun. This is working for Toyota North America, Red Team, Purple Team, Cybersecurity Engineer. Sounds fun, right? This type of job is wanting five years of experience in cybersecurity. They want you to know penetration testing. And looking at certifications, they want you to have the OSCP. Well, it's an added bonus. You don't have to have it. Now, don't get me wrong. There are more junior roles in cybersecurity. You might work for a NOC, 
or a sock. And those jobs are easier to land, but they often will require a bit of knowledge and experience before you get there. Number five, have you ever wanted to become a unicorn? Of course you have. A unicorn also referred to as a DevOps engineer. It's a rare breed. A combination of software programming skills and system administration skills meld together to become awesome. Captain Planet style. Captain Planet, he's a hero. That's how old I am. With an insane increase of 14.1% and an average salary of $136,000 a year, you'll be making bank with plenty of jobs to choose from. But this is a hard job. It requires lots of knowledge. It's definitely advanced and requires to have your feet in two worlds. You gotta know development, programming. And this usually might involve a few languages, Python, Java, whatever that company needs. But then you also have to know the system administration side, AWS, Azure, how to do Microsoft stuff, Linux things. And it's combining those two skills that makes a DevOps engineer. You're kind of the middleman between those two worlds, making things work. And your job will involve automating the system, developing DevOps pipelines. So when you think I wanna become a DevOps engineer, just know this is a role that's later on down the line once you've accumulated some skills and worked a few roles. The good news is that certification and training for DevOps is becoming kind of mainstream. Now you will need to know tools like Puppet, Chef, Jenkins, Ansible, and know how to use DevOps pipelines within all the big cloud providers, Google, Azure, and Amazon. I couldn't think of Amazon. Why couldn't I think of that? And as far as certifications, let me show you real quick. AWS has their AWS certified DevOps engineer, which is very solid and very well respected. And Azure has a similar thing. Now, as far as jobs, here's what you can look for. And looking at the responsibilities, a lot of this is developing and maintaining templates and automation solutions, collaborating with the enterprise architects, security team. You're the liaison between the code world and the systems administration world. And they're looking for a lot of code experience. Python, PowerShell, Bash, Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, CICD tooling, and look at these salary ranges. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Now, number seven and eight are probably the most lucrative jobs on this list at least potentially. They have to do with management. Number seven is the MIS or Management Information Systems Manager, AKA the IT manager. With an increase of 10.8% and an average salary of $132,000 a year, stepping into management is a good idea. High demand, high salaries, but it's hard, it's not for everyone. Here you're gonna be gifted at managing people. And specifically for IT, it requires knowing a bit of IT. Usually coming from that world, coming from a support role and moving up. You may find that you're gifted in that area of managing people, managing projects, helping to build up your IT team. And it also usually involves leading the IT infrastructure decisions. What app are you going to use? What tech stack are you going to deploy? It falls to you. That kind of pressure, that kind of responsibility, it's hard, but it does come in with a pretty big paycheck. Now they're in high demand always because they're hard to find. But if you find yourself good at this, go for it. Here are a few jobs. Information technology manager. And this one seems very technical. You're gonna be overseeing a lot of these, these technologies. You have to know what your engineers are doing and provide solutions to maybe existing problems that just couldn't be solved. Now, the the path to becoming an IT manager varies. Usually in my experience, it involves someone who's been doing IT and they happen to have a skill set geared towards managing people. Maybe you became a supervisor and you shined in that role and you moved up and suddenly you're the manager. Maybe you're a team manager, network team manager or a cloud team uh, manager. That's the usual progression and normally you don't skip that. One of the main downsides with this is that you end up doing more management and less technical things. So if you really love IT and you love the technical aspect, you're gonna be torn away from that world just a bit. But if you don't mind it, number eight might be your next step. This is IT management, the C-suite, big CTO, CIO, chief technology officer, chief information officer, or a VP or a director. The growth is 8.4%, average salary of $164,000 a year, and that range is kind of nuts. Now these roles require a strong, strong ability to lead because normally you're leading the leaders, you're leading the managers in your IT department. And not only that, you have to have a strong vision to where you're gonna lead the IT department. Are you gonna go to the cloud or stay on-prem? You're gonna be focusing on budgets. You're gonna be talking to the other C-suite people, the CEOs, the stakeholders, and the buck stops with you. Servers go down, it's your fault. Company gets hacked, you got hacked, it's your fault. You have to answer for it. But with that responsibility and that stress comes a pretty big paycheck. Here's one of the jobs right here. <laughs> they just straight up tell you um, $800,000 a year remote, but it's an intense role. They want 10 years of experience in management. And normally, and this is the one area in IT where if you wanna become this, I would say you need a degree and not just a bachelor's. You wanna go for a master's, maybe an MBA. If your goal, your aspiration is to become an IT manager, CTO, CIO, VP, whatever, get a degree. I think you're gonna need it in most situations. Number eight might sound redundant, but it is different. We have the application support engineer. Now, whereas the help desk role is more focused on helping the user 
users, troubleshoot their problems, and handling those first level issues, an application support engineer is dealing with supporting a specific application. They normally have a bit of programming knowledge and they help the developers test it, troubleshoot it, and even maintain it. With a growth of 6.3% and an average salary of $96,000 per year, it is more advanced, but it's a great job. Now, because you'll be supporting the development environment, whatever app your company might be producing or supporting, you'll need to know some programming language, whatever that app is built in. So Python, Java, C++, .NET. And you'll be doing things like software testing, problem solving. You might need to know a bit of networking and things about databases, and certainly customer support, interpersonal skills, soft skills. And a lot of this might surround the ALM or application life cycle management. I almost couldn't say that. And you'll learn frameworks like Waterfall or Agile, ITIL, Scrum. So as I said before, this is more of an advanced job. You'll need foundational skills and then you'll add stuff on top of it. So learning Agile. So taking some ITIL courses, Scrum courses, and even jumping into AWS and learning some AWS certified SysOps administrator certifications. Here's a job you might see, and this is actually working for JP Morgan Chase and Co. And you can see where a help desk might troubleshoot some basic stuff. This is more troubleshooting code issues as far as you can go. And if you can't do any more, you just escalate it. But you'll also be in charge of monitoring infrastructure and what they're looking for. Definitely some programming, cloud platforms, networking. <laughs> they want a lot. Number nine, you can make a surprising amount of money, but you won't see this role everywhere. This is for companies that have very large, complex complex projects. This is the program analyst or program manager. Working alongside the project manager, the program analyst, zero in on making sure the project stays on budget and is on time. They'll analyze the project, identifying any risks, helping solve issues, and monitoring compliance and regulation issues. It's a more niche role than a project manager. They're more focused on those tasks. And the demand is pretty high. They had a 12.9% salary increase and an average salary of $139,000 per year. It's pretty good. But you'll be working for a big company. And when looking for jobs, I've noticed it's normally like military. So this job right here, program analyst for FEMA, which is government, obviously. But looking at some of these job tasks, translating business needs into technical and functional requirements, facilitating and participating in agile ceremonies. I don't know what that is, but I know it has something to do with agile. It sounds very Harry Potter-like. I don't know why, maybe it's not that much fun. Documentation, presentations, briefings, a great role if you're really good at this stuff. And finally, number 10, the one that really might surprise you, network engineer. You may have heard it said, network engineering is dying. No, it's not. It's very much alive. With a salary increase of 6.1% and an average salary of $99,000 per year, this career, this job is so fun. I can vouch for it personally. It's what I used to do. Similar to the system engineer or system admin, this might be your next step up after a help desk job or role. If you find that you love the networking side of things, how packets traverse a network, how the routers and switches work, this might be the job for you. Now, yes, more and more things are becoming automated, but it doesn't mean this job is going away. It just means your skill set might change. And the numbers don't lie. This job is hot. People want to hire network engineers. So how do you become one? Well, the best certification you can pursue. And this happens to be one of the best certifications ever across multiple disciplines, from cybersecurity to system administration, to DevOps, to cloud. And it's among the most popular certifications on IT Pro TV. It's the Cisco CCNA. I currently hold a Cisco CCNA. I've taught courses on it. I'm teaching courses on it. This is the gold standard. Getting the certification will usually help you land your first junior network administration role. From there, you can build up your career and make some serious money. And your job will be supporting networks. If the internet goes down, they're going to call you, which can be scary, but also very fun. Here are some jobs. A junior network engineer. What are they looking for? Well, what do you know? They want you to have a CCNA. They point out specific technologies like IPsec, VPN, MPLS, ISIS. And as things are changing, they want you to talk about automation, some Ansible. Here's a more senior role, a network engineer lead at Bank of America. And you can see the required skills are a bit longer. They want you to know SD-WAN, SD-Access, which is more automated networking. Not only do they want you to have CCNA, CCDP, CCMP, which are all Cisco certifications, but also some Juniper certifications and coding and application design experience. So did anything on this list surprise you? I think number 10 was most surprising for me. Also number one, help desk. Whatever the case, this list was super encouraging for me to see. The numbers don't lie. IT is extremely hot and I love that all these roles are at the top of the list. Let me know what you think. So which job do you want? Which one are you aiming for? Or maybe you already have it. Let me know what you think. Is it fun? Is it actually hot? Comment below. I want to hear from you. And thank you again to our sponsor, IT Pro from ACI Learning for making this video possible and having pretty much every bit of training you need for any one of these roles. Anyways, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys next time.